Are you kidding me? What? What the? What? I, 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 I wouldn't even say that. What? What are you watching? <sighs> Man, you're upset. Yeah, I'm watching this video that lots of people sent us from Sorel Amore Finance. It's oh. a YouTube channel. <laughs> And the video is called Electric Car Companies Are Lying to You, The Zero Emission Scam. Yeah, I saw that one. Oh, it makes me so mad. What a bunch of crap. Let's debunk this piece of shit. I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. And you're watching In Depth on Now You Know. This episode is sponsored by Henson Shaving. More on this amazing shaver later in the show. Thank you to Keeps for sponsoring today's show. Keeps is a subscription service that makes it easier and more affordable for men to treat their male pattern baldness online. Two out of three guys will experience some form of male pattern baldness by the time they're 35. I am living proof of this, and the best way to prevent hair loss is to do something about it while you still have your hair left. With Keeps, you'll get a free online consultation with a licensed doctor who will recommend the right hair loss treatment plan for you. Keeps offers clinically proven generic versions of the FDA-approved medications for hair loss, which makes it more affordable. If you're looking for real results, you owe it to yourself to check out the testimonials on the Keeps website. Find out why Keeps has more five-star reviews than any of its competitors and why hundreds of thousands of men trust Keeps for their hair loss prevention. If you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash now you know or click the link in the description to receive 50% off your first order. Don't put it off. Go to K-E-E-P-S dot com slash now you know. All right, so let's start talking about this video. Let's start at the beginning and we'll see how much we can stomach. Yeah, we're going to debunk it point by point. I mean, there's quotes in here like the EV industry is powered by greed, lies and deception or blood is on its hands, knowingly supports environmental destruction as well as child labor and economic slavery. So let's just jump into it and uh, let's go through the first argument. General Motors is heavily promoting the new Hummer as a zero emission car. But that claim isn't just misleading, it's actually a big fat lie. There may be no exhaust coming from the back of New Hummer, but the electricity that drives it definitely creates pollution, as most of the energy generated in the US still comes from burning fossil fuels. All right, it's true that most of the energy generated in the US still comes from burning fossil fuels, but it's quickly getting greener every month. The IEA just reported that for the first six months of 2022, 25% of electrical generation in the United States came from renewables. And this is going to increase fast as more solar and wind farms replace fossil fuel burning power plants. Because there's one piece of the equation that fossil fuels will never be able to beat. The sun shines and the wind blows for free every day. And solar and wind is some of the cheapest installed generation that you can possibly produce. So is she right? No, let's be honest. She's giving you a false argument. The tailpipe of even one of the most inefficient EVs, the GMC EV Hummer, is not putting out any pollution of any kind because there is no tailpipe. And the emissions made to make that electricity depend on where you get your electricity. If you plug your EV in at home and you have solar panels, then your EV is 100% clean no matter how you cut it. If, on the other hand, you plug your EV into the grid in, let's say, the worst grid in America, Wyoming's, you're getting your electricity from burning 72.8% coal, and that's pretty bad. That, that's bad. And so a lot of these EVs are bad arguments. Cherry pick states like this one to make the argument that, see, you're just driving a coal-powered machine. But hang on. What's the alternative in Wyoming? An internal combustion engine vehicle, one that burns gasoline or diesel fuel. Is that any cleaner? Even in the worst case scenarios like Wyoming or Poland, which she uses in her video, they also get most of their electricity from burning coal. It's still 28% cleaner to drive an EV than to drive a gas burning car. But hang on, her argument gets worse because most people don't live in Wyoming or Poland. Let's take the very populous state of California. Here's where the electricity came from on an average day in California on Wednesday, January 26th, 2022. Okay. 55% from renewables, 19.5% from natural gas, and only 0.1% from coal. Basically, an average day in California, way cleaner electricity than Wyoming or Poland's. And now how does an EV fare then? Studies show that under these grid conditions, EVs produce 70 to 80% less CO2 than gas or diesel. So while her statement is correct for now that most electricity in the U.S. is currently derived from burning fossil fuels, it is a misdirect. It is misleading you to believe that driving an EV is no better than driving a gas-burning car. And that is absolutely false. 
It ignores so many other factors that they don't want to bring into the discussion. For instance, how about the other stuff that comes out of the tailpipe of a gas burning car besides CO2? How about the nitrogen oxides? Yeah, elevated levels of nitrogen dioxide can cause damage to the human respiratory tract and increase a person's vulnerability to and the severity of respiratory infections and asthma. Long-term exposure to high levels of nitrogen dioxide can cause chronic lung disease. That doesn't come out of the back of an EV. But you know what? In the U.S., gas-burning vehicles produced over 4 million tons of nitrogen dioxide in 2021. And you know what else doesn't come out of the back of an EV? This. Oh, you can't see it? Well, look closer. Uh, no, even, even closer. Yeah, it's called PM2.5. It's super small. It's a particle that's 2.5 micrometers in diameter. It's 125th the diameter of a human hair, so you're not going to see it. But guess what? Lots of these PM2.5 particles come out of the back of gas-burning cars. Well, that's okay, because I can't see them. So how bad can they be? Real bad. It's bad. These particles are so small that your body can't filter them out like you can with bigger dust particles. They get into your lungs and then into your brain. PM2.5 has been linked to lung cancer, asthma, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, and premature death. And according to the WHO, PM2.5 is associated with the greatest proportion of adverse health effects related to air pollution, both in the United States and worldwide. And I know what you're thinking. I don't know what that means. I mean, it's spread out all over the country, so it's probably not that bad. Yeah, it's that bad. In 2018, according to the EPA, 125 million people in the U.S. lived in areas where, on average, air pollution was above healthy levels. Yep, over a third of our population breathed polluted air. Southern California smog levels were above federal standards for almost three months in a row that year. And if you're like, well, that's OK, I don't live in Southern California. Hang on. Nearly half of the states had at least one county with unhealthy air in 2018. Again, her whole video is based on cherry picked misleading arguments that are designed to confuse and cause fear. Step back and look at the bigger picture and her whole thesis falls apart. And she even has to admit this, but only after she planted the fear and before she goes on to some of the other ridiculous claims. Basically sandwiching the truth in between a bunch of lies. Her next piece of lie bread is... Electric cars are very energy intensive to build, mostly due to the resources needed to produce their battery packs. Because of this, electric cars are much more damaging to produce than their gas-powered ancestors. On average, an electric car needs to be driven around 60,000 kilometers before its lifetime emissions make it cleaner than a car that runs on fossil fuels. Hang on. She even admits that this factoid is questionable from the get-go. Look at her entire quote. Depending on which study you consult. Yeah, this is a quote from an opinion piece, not a scientific journal. And it's true. There are many studies out, some of which are funded by the fossil fuel industry, bent on getting one result. But let's cite a scientific study. How about this one from Michael Wang, a senior scientist and director of the Systems Assessment Center at Argonne's Energy Systems Division. It shows that EVs on almost any grid besides 100% coal produce less CO2 within a year. Even on 100% coal power grids, a Tesla Model 3 is the winner in just over five years. One study not enough for you? How about this one then from the ICCT, or the International Council on Clean Transportation? That concluded that results show that even for cars registered today, battery electric vehicles have by far the lowest life cycle greenhouse gas emissions. Their numbers show that a medium-sized EV has lower climate impact in Europe, 66 to 69 percent reduction, the U.S. a 60 to 68 percent reduction, China 37 to 45 percent reduction, and India a 19 to 34 percent reduction. In the U.S. today, electric vehicles emit about a third of the lifetime emissions of their internal combustion brethren, according to their report. Oh, you'd like to see another report. OK, how about this one conducted by the city of Vancouver, Canada, which conducted an LCA study in 2018 comparing a Ford Focus and a Mitsubishi iMiev for a 93,000 mile lifespan and concluded that the gas powered Ford produced 392 grams of CO2 equivalent per kilometer versus the Mitsubishi, which produced just 203 grams per kilometer equivalent. 
Not good enough? You want another? Sure. How about this 2019 study by Italian scientists published in Modern Environmental Science and Engineering, which stated, the analysis shows that electric vehicles perform better than traditional ones in terms of greenhouse gas emissions, depletion of non-renewable resources, and emissions of atmospheric pollutants affecting urban areas. On average, they found the reduction of CO2 by EVs was about 50%. You need more studies? Yep, you got it. How about the European-based 2020 Transport and Environment Study using an LCA analysis, which stated the potential of electric cars to mitigate CO2 emissions is crystal clear. On average, EVs are close to three times cleaner than diesel and petrol gas cars today. Discussing whether or not coal-fueled electric cars are better or worse for the climate than conventional cars is no longer relevant. EVs are 30% cleaner even then. Even the United States government states that this whole thing is a myth. Well, if there's so many studies proving your point, Zach and Jesse, then where did she get her studies from? Let's be honest. She probably had a hard time finding reputable studies that she could cite. So she had to use an opinion piece that also didn't cite a source. But let's do her work for her. Yeah, let's find a study that does prove her point. How about this one from the German IFO Institute that says that electric vehicles will barely help cut CO2 emissions in Germany over the coming years? It suggests that in Germany, the CO2 emissions of battery electric vehicles are, in the best case, slightly higher than those of a diesel engine. The mass press picked up on this back in 2019 when it came out and ran with it. But you know what? As new data came out, their study became irrelevant. But of course, the headlines remained. What's worse is when studies are funded by the oil industry and designed to mislead. As CNBC and The Guardian reported back in 2018, oil industry is peddling misinformation about electric vehicles. And that's the problem. The press reports on studies and reports, but many of them are bought and paid for by big oil. Sorrell goes on to make this claim. And there's also the problem of waste these cars produce. Whereas almost every part of a gas-powered car can be scrapped or recycled, this isn't the case with electric car battery packs, which are not designed to be reused. And according to most manufacturers, need to be replaced every 100,000 miles. But her claim ignores one important point. Maybe you can recycle an old gas car, but how about the, on average, 5,600 gallons of gasoline that got burned by that car during its lifetime? Can you recycle that? Oh, no. Oh, right, because it was burned and all that CO2 and air pollution. Remember the nitrous dioxide and the PM 2.5 particles? Yeah, that. Well, that's all floating around, heating up the atmosphere and polluting our lungs. Yeah. 69 million metric tons of CO2 produced in an average ice car's lifespan. Can you recycle that? And how about the 63 pounds of nitrous dioxide produced and the 600 grams of PM 2.5 that's created over the lifespan of an average ice car? Now, you might be saying 600 grams, that's nothing. That's only 1.3 pounds. But that's enough PM 2.5 to prematurely kill 35 people. So she says that you can recycle the ice car but she conveniently ignored all of the effects of the ice car and the stuff that it burned. How convenient. But you know what? Battery packs can be recycled. Sorrel makes it sound like EV battery packs have to be thrown out, but her own footage reveals the truth. Yeah, every single picture and video that she uses to talk about battery waste actually comes from battery, battery recyclers. recyclers. Because it makes sense. Materials inside an EV battery, the lithium, graphite, copper, nickel, aluminum, and so forth, are all really valuable. And so nobody wants to throw them away. And that is why there's a bunch of new companies like Redwood Materials, Lifecycle, and Ascend Elements, which, by the way, we went and visited, that are busy recycling batteries as we speak. So no, her argument is false on its face. And one more thing. She claimed that the average lifespan of an EV battery pack was only 100,000 miles. This is false. It's false. It's a total fabrication. I have two EVs right outside with almost 100,000 miles on them, and their battery packs are doing great. Test Loop, an EV rideshare, has EVs in its fleet with 300 and 400,000 miles, and these are early generation battery packs. As battery technology improves, ranges are going to get even higher. EVs haven't even been around long enough to get an accurate battery pack lifespan estimate. But it's easy to make the argument now, well, these batteries aren't being recycled because they're still in f***ing use. So get your facts straight before making misleading claims. Her last argument is all about cobalt and how bad it is. She talks about the dangers of artisanal cobalt mines in the Congo and how children are forced to work as miners. 
This is a great argument for her because she can keep showing little children in Africa, and it's hard not to feel an emotional response. And what she failed to mention is that there's lots of sources of cobalt in the world that don't involve children, like the Sherritt Nickel and Cobalt Mine in Fort Saskatchewan, Alberta, or the Talvivara Mine in Finland. And now there are a lot of environmentally conscious mines coming online in the developed world because of the increased value of cobalt because of electric cars. And don't get us wrong, we don't want little children or mistreated people mining for materials. But there are three points that she didn't bring up. Number one, you don't need cobalt in an EV battery. Yeah, Tesla, for instance, is making cars right now, hundreds of thousands of them, that have no cobalt at all in the battery. That's right. They're called LFP, or lithium iron phosphate, and they work just fine without any cobalt. In fact, many manufacturers are making their cars with these. Number two, ICE cars use something called gasoline to run them, and she didn't show us any of this. Yeah, somehow she didn't include any of this footage of oil spills. Train tanker derailments. Pipeline bursts. Wildlife soaked in oil. Or the ocean on fire. Yeah, I guess that didn't play into her argument. But guess what? It has way more effect on you and the planet than a mineral that makes up less than 3% of a lithium, nickel, manganese, cobalt battery cell. And lastly, as we mentioned, EV batteries are recyclable, and one of the most valuable materials to be recycled is the cobalt. So as we go forward, less and less cobalt will be mined, and more and more will be sourced from recycled batteries. Today, if cobalt is something that you don't want in your EV, you have many choices of EVs that have no cobalt. Did she mention that in her video? The Tesla Model Y standard range being sold in Europe right now is made with BYD LFP batteries. No cobalt. The Tesla Model 3 is made in Shanghai have LFP batteries. No cobalt. Again, this is all designed to misdirect, mislead, and cause FUD. As long as you have fear about EVs, it will delay you from learning more and getting one. And that's what the fossil fuel industry wants. Was her video full of facts or misleading information? You be the judge. And Sorrel even admits. But do I think that electric cars are the solution that our world needs right now? Personally, I just don't know. So then why the f did you put out a video making false claims and then not even come to a helpful conclusion? You just misled people and confused them and told them to take less airplane flights and walk more? We all know that walking and riding bikes is better than driving, but most people won't replace their cars with a bike or walking shoes. And for those people, you just delayed the transition to sustainable transportation. And for that, I can't forgive you. You have a subscriber base more than twice the size of ours, and with that comes responsibility. In my opinion, you just took a bunch of oil industry talking points at face value, added a bunch of shiny B-roll, and regurgitated it out to your audience all to come to the conclusion that you don't even have an answer. I just don't know. Well, we have an answer, and we talk about it every week on our shows as we have for the past six years. We've done the research. We do the interviews. We know the facts. EVs are the answer. Clean energy is here, and it's growing, and we encourage you to be part of the solution, not the problem. If you follow Sorrel's convoluted video, you're likely to be paralyzed with indecision and doubt. And the world doesn't need any more of that. Thank you for watching and being a part of our amazing community. I'm sorry if we got a little riled up there, but this kind of FUD really gets me mad. If you've got someone who keeps sharing this kind of FUD with you about EVs, then share this video back to them. Let us show them that their arguments make no sense. And if you want to support the work we do, then join us each week on Tesla Time News. It comes out every Tuesday as it has for the past six years. And consider supporting us on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, you get access to all of our Patreon bonus stories, dozens of stories a month made just for our patrons. Please comment down below what you think about Sorrel's arguments and whether you think she made any good points that we didn't address here in this video. And before we go, this episode was sponsored by our friends at Henson Shaving. We can't do the work we do without the support of you, our viewers and patrons, and our generous sponsors. We've been working with Henson because we believe in their sustainable mission. Now you might be saying, how is a shaver sustainable? But that's because the way most of us do shaving isn't sustainable. Yeah, we buy shavers that use disposable shaver heads. Not only are they expensive, but they're super impossible to recycle. Well, Henson does it differently. They made this precisely manufactured aluminum or titanium shaver that holds this recyclable steel blade perfectly. Meaning, not only do you get a perfect clean shave every time, but you don't need to waste money on a disposable cartridge, which, by the way, multiple blade cartridges actually pull the hair up out of your face and then cut it so that it pops back under the surface of your skin, which leaves you with a nice smooth face for a day until those hairs start to grow and many of them become ingrown, which leaves bumps and painful irritation. Fix that problem, save money, be sustainable, 
by going to HensonShaving.com and use our code now you know to get 100 free blades today. Thank you, Henson. We'll see you next week. Now, now you, you know. know. Thanks so much for watching Now You Know. We work hard to bring you videos about things that we think you'll find useful, but we need to know from you what you want to see, so leave your comments below. Also, don't forget to go over to our Patreon page, where for as little as a buck a month, you can watch our Patreon bonus story every week on Tesla Time News. Thanks again. We'll see you soon.